Hey everybody, good afternoon. Um, I just got a bunch, uh, I just got more direct import wine from Louis Dressner. Uh, not today, it's Saturday, but uh, a couple days ago. Um, I got a pal from Pierre Olivier Bonhomme in Turin. So this is exciting. Uh, this is KO in Coat We Trust. This is Coat, 100% Coat, which is what in the Loire they call Malbec. So this is French Malbec. Um, totally different from Argentina though. Um, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme, I guess I should start out. So it's made by this guy, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme, who learned how to make wine um, from uh, Thierry Pouzelot at Claude de Tubouf in Cheverny. Um, Claude de Tubouf is a legendary winery. Uh, Thierry Pouzelot is a legendary winemaker and guy who has done a lot of stuff, um, like started this extra winery because he had his own winery, his family winery, and he was like, I need more to do. And frost has wiped out all my fruit several years in a row. So started another winery, uh, opened a wine bar, did a bunch of things, <clears throat> got too busy, and then um, uh, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme had sort of I think done like a internship or something with him when he was a teenager, uh, and then after high school uh, they kept in touch, and Thierry Pouzelot needed help. Got back in touch with uh, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme, pulled him in, and he started working at this winery, which was sort of um, Thierry Pouzelot's negoci negociant project, uh, and then Thierry Pouzelot sort of passed the winery off, or Pierre Olivier Bonhomme completely took over the winery, and Thierry Pouzelot went back to just being quoted to both when his brother retired. So anyway... Uh, Pierre Olivier Bonhomme learned how to make wine from Thierry Pouzelot. That is the important takeaway there from all of my rambling. Um, oh, I forget what the first vintage that he made was. 2014 was his first vintage on his own? Maybe it was 2013, something like that. Anyway, so 100% Malbec. This is 45-year-old vines. It's a single little parcel that Pierre Olivier Bonhomme owns himself. Uh, I don't know how large it is. Le Autom, Autom, I think it's called. 15-day um, maceration, and then aged for, this is 2018, uh, I believe for a year and a half, I believe 18 months in 500-liter big old oak. Demi weeds, demi, I don't know how to pronounce French. 500 liter oak barrels. Uh, zero sulfur added. This is a zero zero wine. It is totally black. Completely black in the glass. Like I'm holding it right up to the edge of the, the nail of the wine up to my hand. Like I can't see. I can't see through it. It's black. It smells. like blackberry, like really vivid blackberry. Not just like, it smells very juicy and ripe, um, but it also has that like brambly spicy kind of aroma. Like it's it's verging on, it's it's, uh, it's edging into being like juniper and, and pine scented and stuff. But the first impression, the first impact aromatically is like blackberry, sort of black cherry too because it has that that zip that zing and then sort of juniper blue spruce it's almost tobacco-y too gosh it's a really cool aroma like a little bit cedary like cigar box ah it's really cool Man. Also really cool on the palate. It has a lot of... Should I say it? Should I say it? I'm going to say it. It has a lot of tannin. But they're not... They're not like super aggressive tannins. They're not super young tannins. It's a 2018. Um, they're like very fine, tightly wound tannins. They are the primary structure of the wine. There's, there's like the black, there's blackberry, black cherry fruit, really juicy right up front. You get that. Um, but then the tannin comes in 
and it's like very tight, very finely grained tannin. Um, ah, boy, textural, like woodsy, fills your mouth. Uh, but the thing is, this is 12.5% alcohol, according to the front label here. Um, it might even be less than that, uh, because it's not a heavy wine at all. Like, this is a medium bodied to, like, even sort of lightish red wine. Mmm. So juicy up front. Lovely. And then this, like, real pithy, gritty tannin. It's just textural. It's not earthy tasting. But it's just like, geez, the texture. And it's not, it's not sharp. It's not harsh. It just really dries your palate out. And, and lingers. Mmm. It does a great job, actually, of balancing the fruit that's up front. It just makes the wine more serious. Um, if it didn't have that tannin, it would be more towards what you'd sort of expect from like an Argentine Malbec, except it's way lighter than probably any Argentine Malbec that I've ever had. Um, no, I take that back. It reminds me of some like weird, you know, things you never see that are like high elevation lighter Argentine Malbecs. Anyway, um, yeah, so medium bodied and it's basically, it's a play between this juicy blackberry, brambly, really vivid, visceral, like in your face, fresh, juicy, ripe, overripe, crushed, you know, berry fruit right up front. It's brambly, has nice acidity. And then the tannin comes in, and it's not harsh. It's just the perfect counterweight for that fruit, and makes the wine really linger on your palate. Gosh, this is really cool. This is really enjoyable, really interesting. I'm gonna save the rest of this. I've got a bunch of different things to grill tonight, um, and this is actually gonna be awesome with them. So cool. And I got in like I forget 14 cases of this, which is for me kind of a lot actually for like unknown organic zero sulfur Malbec from the Loire really lovely very like this has got such a sense of place it just it tastes like the Loire Valley so all right happy Juneteenth